from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring J. Carol Nash and Susan Whitney in The Miracle of Fatima. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In October of 1951, a million people visited the little town of Fatima, Portugal, to commemorate the miracle of Fatima. Warner Brothers has brought this impressive story to the screen, not only with reverence, but with gentle humor. Because it's also a very human drama. And as our stars, we are pleased to have that unique artist, J. Carol Nash. And in her original role, a young actress who has a great future, Susan Whitney. Now, The Miracle of Fatima, starring J. Carol Nash as Hugo, and Susan Whitney as Lucia. Some 40 years ago in Portugal, a revolution occurred in the church. After seven years of upheaval, churches in the remote districts were permitted to reopen. So it was in the little mountain village of Fatima. Well, I was a young man in those days, the friend of all the world. I worked a little, rubbed a little, and drank the good mountain wine. It was on a Sunday morning that I met the children on the road. Lucia and her two little cousins, the boy Francisco and his sister Jacinta. In fact, you look so funny, Hugo. So much man on such a little donkey. I have told you many times, Francisco, if the little donkey hears you talk like that, he's going to be offended. Now, where do you go on such a fine morning? The sheep, Hugo. We're taking them to the pasture. Look, Hugo. We brought lunch. Bread and cheese. Oh, but that is not enough for Sunday. Permit me to provide the dessert here. For each of you, a fine apple. Oh, oh thank you, Hugo. Like you, you know, these beautiful apples nearly cost me my life. Oh, what, what happened? happened? Well, I saw these apples in an orchard by the roadside. I know. You stole them. Who, me? Stole them? Oh, now. No, 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 little one. The orchard belongs to a rich friend of mine. He had told me to help myself, but his dog he did not know that. Dog? Oh, sure, there were seven of them, seven big mastiffs. And they were leaping at my throat, and there I was all alone, and with my bare hands I fought them. Poor dogs, they never going to leap no more. You killed them? Well, all except the biggest one. He lay down and cried like a little baby. <laughs> You tell such good stories, Ugo, but we know they're not true. You'd better ask Father Ferreira to forgive you. Father, no, 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 no priest for Hugo. Why not? Well, it's all right to go to church. Francisco for children is fine, but not for me. Don't you believe in God? Believe in God? Well, let us say that God, he doesn't believe in me. Now go on, take the sheep to the cover. So it was that the children went to the pasture land that belonged to Lucia's father. And for what occurred that morning, there was only one word, the word of the children themselves. It began when the children sat down on the rocks to eat their bread and cheese. What was that? I must be a storm coming. How could it be a storm with the sky so bright? I don't know. But we better head for home. Then he will see me. She says to say to Rosalie, what is it you want of me? 
I come to ask you to come here for six months in succession on the 13th day at the same hour. Then I will tell you who I am and what I want. You see her. I can see her now. I can see her plain. Do you wish to offer yourself to God to endure all the suffering he may please to send you to help atone for the sins by which he is offended and to ask for the conversion of sinners? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, my lady. Then you will have much to suffer. But the grace of God will be your comfort. My God, my God. I love you. Say the rosary every day to obtain peace for the world and to end war. She's gone, you see. The beautiful lady is gone. But she'll come back. She said so, didn't she, Lucia? Don't talk. Don't. That's too wonderful. As I had been the last to see the children on their way to the Kova, so it happened that I was the first to see them walking back toward the village. Hello, Hugo. Hello, Hugo. Well, now, is that the way to greet an old friend? Hello, Hugo. Now, what is the matter, huh? What's wrong? We saw a beautiful lady in the Kova, and she came from heaven. Oh, from heaven, huh? Well... A stranger in these parts, why don't you introduce me? Maybe she needs somebody to show her around, huh? She came on a cloud of light, standing on a little tree. And she said we must pray to make God feel better. Well, now, 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 what is all these beautiful ladies in trees making speeches? I think maybe you stayed too long in the sun. Well, we did see her, Hugo. And she was from heaven. She was, she was. All right, all right. Now, if you say it, I believe it. You saw a lady? Good. She came from heaven? Fine. Only let us keep it among ourselves, huh? A secret, huh? You tell nobody but Hugo. Why not? Well, because others, they might make fun of you. Say ugly things, maybe. Hugo's right. We mustn't tell anyone. Good, good. Now, now go on. Go on, go on home. All of you, hurry now before you might lose your... Yes. Lucia and Francisco kept the secret. But for the little ones, for Jacinta, it was too much. That night she told her mother and father what she had seen. And they rushed to the home of Lucia's parents. Where is she, Maria? Lucia, where is she? At this hour, children are in bed, Olympia. All this excitement. Why? For what reason? What reason? The vision, of course. The vision in the cova. Vision? Yes. They saw a vision, Antonio. Jacinta and Francisco and your Lucia. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Our children chosen by the Holy Mother herself. Holy Mother? What are you talking about? Ah, there you are, Lucia. Come here, my little niece. Come, we have come to see you. Lucia, Jacinta told everything. I didn't want to tell Lucia, but I, I, I had to. Now everybody knows about it. Everybody. Come here, Lucia. Yes, Mama. Did you say you saw the Blessed Virgin in the Kova today? I didn't say anything, Mama. But we did see a lovely lady in the tree. Who else could it be? She didn't say who she was. I told you a hundred times. Now, who makes up these silly stories? Jacinta and Francisco say it is true. They have never lied to us, Maria Rosa. Never. They saw the Mother of God. In the Kova? But why would she come there? Oh, are you all fools? Stories like this can bring the police to our door. Lucia, tell your aunt and uncle that you put this nonsense into Jacinta's head. But she didn't. It happened. Tell them, Lucia. Tell them you lied. I didn't lie, Mama. It's the truth. Shame on you. I'll teach you the truth. <gasps> now you go to your room. Later that night, the mother and father of Lucia went to the home of the village priest, to Father Ferreira. Insist that she is telling the truth? Yes, Father, yes. As if the Blessed Virgin had nothing better to do than ride around in clouds and talk to children. She was always a pious child, Maria. Yes, I know. She loves stories of saints and visions. But now she's making them up herself. When I think of the blasphemy... Uh, just where is this cova you're talking about? 
Oh, it's on my land, Father, a place where we graze the sheep. And when does she say this lady of theirs is supposed to appear again? A month from today. But that's St. Anthony's feast day, a day the children love. <laughs> no, I doubt if Lucy and the others will want to miss the fun here in the village. Then your advice, Father... Ignore the whole episode. It's just a game the children played. In a month, they'll forget all about it. So a month went by, but the children did not forget. On the feast of St. Anthony, Francisco and Jacinto went to the cova, but not Lucia. She went to the village with her parents for the celebration. Her heart broken, her eyes wet with tears. Uh, look at her, Maria, all by herself and still crying. It's wrong for a child to be that unhappy. It is also wrong for a child to say she saw a vision. And you, her own father, to forgive a thing like this. Uh, Ugo says that people have come here from 50 miles away. They're in the cova waiting for the children to speak to the village. It isn't enough that people are such fools. But if the government hears about this... Well, maybe, maybe it is better this way. Nothing will happen and then they will be ashamed to even think about it anymore. Oh, let us hope so. Meanwhile... Lucia must learn her lesson, that she cannot... Antonio, what is it? What's going on? The music and the merrymaking had suddenly stopped. An automobile had driven up two men from the government. They looked on the crowd and called for Father Ferreira. You, priest, you know who I am? The administrator, yes, yes, I know. This is Señor Paris, the new magistrate Murai. Now, where are the children? Children? The children you've been using to stir up the people with reports of a vision. Under the law, reports of miracles are a crime. Now point them out to us. Oh, I know of no children who have seen the Blessed Virgin. You're lying. One of them is called Lucia. Which is the child named Lucia? Say what it, please. It is the government who is your friend, not the church and not the priest. Those who help the priest in this fraud will go to jail with him. Now... Where are the children? But no one spoke. Foolish visions were one thing, but to betray children, to endanger the priest, that was something else again. I will give you five minutes. You will produce the girl Lucia, or the most drastic measures will be taken against this entire village. You are defying the law. Do you oh, understand wait, wait, that? Wait, 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 Well, well, well. Well, you ask for Lucia, Signor, but which Lucia? We have dozens of Lucias here, Your Excellency. Every one of them and make up anything from flocks of angels to devils on horseback. <laughs> now, Signora, Signora, as for me, for me, I think a lovely lady in a tree is fascinating because I like to climb trees. Oh, be quiet. My apologies, Signora. I only try to point out that the government seems to believe in this miracle more than we do. We will give you just one more chance. No one is to leave this plaza. We will question every one of you. Now line up in front of the church. Line up! In all of the commotion, it was easy to slip away. And when I left, Lucia was with me. Lucia and... Where are we going, Hugo? Where? Well, to your, your house, little one. Better yet, to a neighbor's house, till all this blows away. No, Hugo. No. Take me to the cova. To the cova? Huh? The lady expects me... And it's almost time. Oh, don't you see? She must have sent you. Uh, me, me, me? An unbeliever? Please, Hugo, please. All right, little one. To the cover, it is. There were still people in the cover. Fifteen or twenty. And in front of the little tree, the two other little children. You sent to Francisco. Lucia, look, it's Lucia. In the cloud, it's coming again. It's coming to the little tree. What did we do? He is kneeling on the ground. We'd better kneel, too. Dear lady, dear lady, I knew you'd come back to us. I knew it, I knew it. You are unhappy, my daughter. Only because of my mother, but, but not anymore. Tell us what you'd have us do. Jesus wishes to use you to make me known and loved throughout the world. Lucia, she ought to cut is here with the crippled boy. She asked us to speak to the lady. Will you cure him, dear lady? Her prayers shall be answered within a year. When will you take us to heaven? 
I will take Jacinta and Francisco soon. But you must remain some time longer. You're going to take them? You mean they're going to... I have no fear for them. But why must they go? Why? Please, dear lady. Besides my mother, I, I love them more than anyone in the world. Don't cry, Miss dear. If you cry, then I'll cry. Forgive me, my lady. I'll do anything. But don't take them. Don't leave me here alone. Dear child, I'll be with you always. My immaculate heart will be your refuge. And the path that leads to the dark. She's going away. She's disappearing. In the cloud. The cloud, it, it's gone. <laughs> baby, little baby, what is the matter, huh? Somebody hurt you? The lady said you were going to take Francisco and Jacinta. We're going to heaven, she said. <laughs> then I don't want them to go. Well, well, well maybe, maybe, maybe you misunderstood the, 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 the lady. No, no, I didn't. Oh, she was here, huh? The same lady? Well, she was, Hugo. She was here. But but no one else saw her, little friend. I looked very hard. All the other people back there, they was looking too. But nothing. She came to us and she said she would. She said we're going to heaven. Well, Soon. Well, 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 now wait, wait. Maybe she will change her mind. Ladies do, you know. Now come. Come with the hugo, huh? The three of you come. We stayed far from the village until the administrator and the magistrate had gone back to Urai. When I brought the children home, Father Ferreira was waiting for them. So you saw her again today, my child? Yes, Father, yes. What did she tell you? The lady had told us the way would be hard. I didn't know what she meant then, but... Oh, but I do now. I thought you'd believe us, Father. I may neither believe nor disbelieve until all the facts are examined. What else did the Blessed Mother say? I, I didn't say she was the Blessed Mother. But she was, she was. Jacinta, be quiet. Perhaps you can tell us what the lady said, Jacinta. She said we're going to die, Father. <gasps> Soon. Not Lucia. Just Francisco and me. Going to die, Lucia. You told them that. Father, you see what terrible things she's doing. There's no end to this. Lucia didn't tell us. It was the label. Stop saying such things. Lucia, if you are lying, I implore you to tell me. Oh, it would be so easy to tell you that I am. Then all I'd get would be a whipping. But I'm not, Father. Look, child, you saw what happened today. The administrator, the magistrate, they made grave threats. If they come here again, soldiers will come with them. Do you want them to take me away to close the doors of our church? Oh, no, Father, no. Then tell me the truth. I told you the truth. I swear it. I... I believe you, Lucia. That... That they saw the Virgin? I believe they saw something. Good or evil, I cannot say. Evil? The devil comes to us in many forms, Lucia. Oh, no, Father. Not the lady. I'm going to write to the bishop and tell him. Until I hear from him... I don't want any of you to go to the cova anymore. Yeah, no, no, Father, no, no, no. And let us pray to God to enlighten us all. What's the matter, Lucia? Are you sick, child? No, Mama. I, I just couldn't sleep. Come inside before we wake the others. You're angry with me? No. No, I'm not angry anymore. Just worry, Lucia. Tell Mama. Tell me. Father Pereira said that... that the lady might be the devil. She couldn't be that. Could she, Mama? Father Pereira knows more about such things than we do. Surely the devil would want the church closed. He'd want to see Father Pereira in jail, too, wouldn't he? But if you only could have seen her as I did, if you only could have heard her voice, I can't stop thinking about her. Oh, are you going to begin all that? No, again? Mama. No, don't be mad at me. Even though I, I promised her to come, I, I'm never going to see her anymore. Never. I don't want you to hate me. I love you, Mama. I love you. And I love you, my darling. 
Now close your eyes. Try to sleep. I'll be here, Lucia. My little bird. My poor, tormented baby. In just a moment, we will continue with Act Two of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. That's a thought which the 4-H Clubs of America had in mind when they began sponsoring the International Farm Youth Exchange. The main purpose of the IFYE is to select young farmers or those who've majored in university agricultural courses whom they send abroad for short periods to work with the people and promote understanding and friendship. Last summer, for example, three young California farmers were chosen to spend four to five months in Ecuador. While there, they visited farms, discussed agriculture with the people, and lent what assistance they could. The work of these grassroots ambassadors, as they are called, is voluntary, for although their trips are sponsored by the 4-H clubs in their neighborhood, the major portion of their expenses is paid by the young farmers themselves. Their work can in no way be considered charity because they learn as much from people in other countries as those people learn from them. Yes, members of the International Farm Youth Exchange have learned the secret of international understanding, that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of The Miracle of Fatima, starring Jake Carroll Nash as Hugo and Susan Whitney as Lucia with Jeanette Nolan as Maria. Yes, the poor unhappy child had told her mother that never again would she look for the vision of the lady. But not Lucia and not Maria could control the imagination of the people. Word of a miracle flew like leaves in a wind. From all over Portugal, the pilgrims came to Fatima to visit the Cova and pray before the little oak tree. And then, then a wonderful idea came to me, and I brought it to Lucia's father, to Antonio. You are my dear friend, Hugo. You alone would think to buy me wine in my hour of such problems. Well, we dig an auto bottle, huh? Mm. Hey, Salazar, more wine for Antonio. Everybody goes crazy, Antonio, except you and me. But if they wish to believe fairy tales, that is their business. Hugo, Hugo, what the children say... Maybe, maybe it's true. Antonio, you are a grown man. Well, all I know is that on the 13th day of the next month, you will see thousands here in Fatima. Exactly, my friend. And who am I to argue against the belief of thousands? My dear Antonio, heaven has sent us our own private miracle. Uh, help me, Hugo. Comfort me. Then listen closely. You own the cova, and I am your dearest friend, your partner. So we will charge each and every one a small fee to see the Virgin, huh? Think what a good deed we're going to be doing. No. Oh, Antonio, be sensible. Well, you, you, you don't even go to church. You will try to cheat God himself. But God owns such a big world, Antonio, and we got so little of it. <laughs> now, look, Antonio, first thing we do, we build a gate, a fence, and in the morning... No, we... no. Oh, Antonio, we're going to be rich. We will be popular. Yeah, I, 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 I will drink a little more wine and think about it, but the answer will still be no. Such a thing would be, would be a sin. But I have sinned all my life. You think God will care if I sin just a little bit more? No. No, no. Oh, I, I am frightened. Frightened. All my life I have been cursed with good friends who are religious. It is a great burden. Antonio, Hugo, come quickly, quickly. What? More visions, huh? More angels playing the harp? And the church, the administrator is closing the church. Closing the church? They are nailing the doors up with boards. There are soldiers with rifles on his steps. Oh, hurry. Three little children have caused all of this. Hmm. I have just decided to be a bachelor for the rest of my life. Perhaps now your people will believe us, Father Ferreira. We warned you on St. Anthony's Day, but you would not listen. The children have done this stupid thing because you told them to. You and your bishop. Your pies, please. Why would we plot such a thing when we knew it would only bring disaster upon us? Then your bishop does not sanction these reports of the vision? It is you who sanction them, Sihoris. 
Can't you see that by closing the church you have made these people believe that the vision must be true? It's been reported that the virgin will again appear on the 13th of next month. I give you my word that every priest in Portugal will tell his people to stay away from Fatima. Good. Then we'll see how well you priests can control them. If there is no hysterical mob here on July 13th, we'll allow you to reopen your church. So, you see, it is now in your hands, Father Ferreira. Uh, good day. But on the 12th of July, the people again were pouring into Fatima. And that night, the parents of Jacinta and Francisco struggled through the crowds to the house of Lucia's parents. I never thought we would get here. Such crowds, such questions. Listen to them. Listen to the fool. I stand around my house. I look into the window all for a glimpse of Jacinta and Francisco. Where are they? They are hiding under the bed, and the doors of my house are locked. Never have we had to lock them before. Tomorrow there will be thousands of the cold. The priests have warned the people to stay home so our church could be opened again, but still they come. The whole country gone mad. Eh, perhaps the Blessed Virgin wants them here, Maria. That I will never believe. Neither does Lucia believe it. She won't stir out of the house tomorrow. Come here, Lucia. Tell them yourself. I, I will not go to the cova. I'll stay at home. But Francisco and Jacinto, what will they do without you? Oh, Maria, you are making a great mistake. I also believe as you do, Marta, but what can I do? Enough. Father Ferreira said the children should not go. But who saw the lady? Father Ferreira? No. The children saw her. And I believe what they tell me. <laughs> Maria, the child is crying. Lucia will keep her promise to me until the church is opened again. Uh, do what you want, Maria. My children will go to the cova tomorrow. And late that night in her torment, in her helplessness, Lucia slipped away from her house and went to the cova. As she ran down the road, she saw many pilgrims asleep on the ground and others who sat in the darkness waiting for the day to come. No one knew her. To them, she was just a sad little girl who knelt by the tree and prayed. Oh, my lady, help me. Won't you please tell me how I can keep my promise to you with, without hurting my mother? One little sign, though. Just so I'll know what to do. Show me your face. Help me, my lady. Maria, she's gone. Lucia is gone. She's not in her bed and her clothes are gone. Maybe she went to water the sheep. No, 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 no. I looked. She's not out there. She's not with her cousins either. I called her Marco and he said he hasn't seen her since last night. You are thinking of the cova. No, Antonio. She promised me. But then the, the, the plaza, the, 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 the square then, in front of the church. If she's out in that crowd and they find out who she is, call the neighbors. Tell them they must help us find her. No. No, I will go. If she comes back, don't let her leave. Lock the doors. Keep everyone out. It was scarcely more than daylight, but a portion of the crowd was already plodding toward the cova. And it was there that Maria finally found her, Lucia, asleep on the ground. Lucia! Oh, my baby, my darling. Thank God. Why did you run away from us? But I didn't, Mama. I, I oh, meant to come home, but I, I must have fallen asleep. I'm so sorry, Mama. Forgive me. It's all right. It's all right. I'll go home now. You... you want to go home? Oh, no. No, but I... I promised you I'd... You would rather stay here. Then stay, my child. Please. Just leave us alone. Don't... don't touch her. Just leave us alone. All during the morning, Father Ferreira pleaded and begged, but in vain. The people would not listen. They had come to the cova to witness a miracle, and there they would remain. You have been deceived. You will not find Holy Mother here. You offend her, believing she would show herself to a crowd in a field. Go home. Go home and beg her forgiveness. They ignore you, huh? Well, I warned you, priest. Sure. We did all we could to prevent this. I have a troop of cavalry waiting down the road. I promise you that by noon this field will be empty. And as for you, you are under arrest. Under arrest. 
There was pity for the priest and anger for the government. But the crowd would not leave. And when the troops came and tried to ride them down, it was the people who routed the soldiers. And when the hour of noon arrived, a great silence hung over the Kova. Thousands of people stood motionless as they watched the children fall to their knees and turn their faces toward the little cloud that hovered over the oak tree. Are you sorry, dear lady? We're in such terrible trouble. You are enduring these hardships for the conversion of sinners as atonement for sins committed against God. If the people do not seek to offend him, another and worse war will break out. When you see a strange light in the sky, you will know it is a sign that the world is about to be punished for its crimes. In Russia, there is an evil scheme to destroy the peace on earth. To prevent this, I ask that she be converted. If not, she will cause war and persecution. Good people will be martyred. Many nations will be destroyed. If what I say is heeded, many souls will be saved, and there will be peace. It is necessary that people amend their lives. Let them offend our Lord God. No more. Uko. Uko, do you hear anything? Only a sound like the wind in the trees. But there is no wind. The whole earth is still. My lady, the people can't see you or hear you as we do. Many of them don't believe that you appear to us. In October, I will give them a sign that will make them believe. It was the same thing all over again, the three children swearing that they saw and heard the lady. But no one else had seen anything more exciting than a cloud, the tree, and the hot sun. And yet throughout all Portugal, they did nothing but argue and debate about it. But for a whole month, the officials bothered no one. Then, on October 13th, I mean August 13th, the administrator drove his automobile to Lucia's house to meet with the parents. You're not very happy to see me, are you? Well, <laughs> I don't blame you. But I think that will change when you learn that your priest has been released. Uh -oh. Father Ferreira is back? I've just come from his house. And do you know who else is there? The bishop. The bishop. The bishop. And the bishop would like to speak to the children before they go to the cova. He wants to see them now, so I, uh, I offer to come and get them. But we can take them to your... Uh, fine, fine. Of course, if the bishop is to speak to them before they go to the cover, uh, there is not much time, is there? It will be much quicker in my automobile. If the children leave here, we will take them to your... You want your church reopened, don't you? I prefer they come with me. To your... Now, if the bishop agrees to sanction these miracles, and if he agrees to accept our responsibility for whatever happens, the government will give you back your church. I, and everything will be as it was? Uh, just as it was. Maria, we must let them go. Yes, I agree. Let him take the children to the bishop. Imagine, to see the bishop in an automobile. For simple people, you do not require a clever trick. The children were taken, not to the bishop, but to the magistrate's office in the town of Ures. And the questioning began. You children have perjured yourselves and incited people to violence and riot. Now, what have you to say about it, hmm? Huh? We're very sorry, Sior. It would be a terrible thing to send children to prison, never to see your mothers again. Ah, uh, but you can help us not to do it. Simply confess that the priest told you to spread these silly stories about a lady from heaven and we'll let you go. <laughs> you see how easy it is? But he didn't. The priest said it was the devil. And we did see a lady and she did talk to us. And she said we would suffer for it. Uh, now suppose that instead of locking you up in prison, we were to take you to the shops and buy you fine new clothes, wonderful toys, anything you want. Now, wouldn't that be nice? You don't have to pay us to tell you the truth, C.R.s. We do it for nothing. Now, you listen to me. Sometimes when people don't answer the way they should, the police have ways of making them. How would you like to be dropped into a kettle filled with boiling oil, huh? How would you like that, huh? I... 
I don't think we'd like that, Sheila. Well, that's exactly what will happen unless you admit you lied. Well? We've only told the truth, C.R. Very well. Come in, Captain. Get your soldiers and throw them in the dungeon. They had no intention to harm the children, simply to terrify them into confession. So it happened that a few moments later, they found me waiting for them in the jail. Hugo, look! It's Hugo! Hugo, you've come to save us! Well, not exactly, but I... But, but how did you get here? Well, how, well, there was a soldiers in Fatima, little one. Ten, twelve, fourteen soldiers. And when I find what they have done to you, I charge them all alone by myself with my two bare hands. You know, this time I... I think you're telling the truth. Forgive me, please. I think there was only three of them. <laughs> Mori was beautiful while it lasted. Now I got to spend 15 days in jail. But you here. Now they are putting children in prison. First he was going to boil us in oil. Boil you? Did he say that? Don't worry, Hugo. He didn't do it. And this is the day the lady from heaven is to come. Um, now she'll think we didn't keep our promise. Oh, I see. And we'll never get to see her again. Now, now, don't cry, baby. What do you want, huh? Tell me what you want, and I will do it. I want to go home to my mother. Oh, yeah. uh, that's one thing I, I cannot do now, but... Well, give me time. Give me time to think, and, and don't worry. Hugo will not let them hurt you, only that is not enough. How am I going to get you out of here? How, how, how am I going to get you out? And as I sat there struggling with this great problem upstairs in the magistrate's office, a colonel of the army had just arrived from Fatima. Well, what are you so excited about? Uh, it is no use, Sio. The people in Fatima, they, they refuse to disperse, children or adult children. The culvert is jammed and they are all praying. Oh, this ridiculous praying. A volley over their head will shut off their prayer. Do you want a riot on your hands, Sio? Then what do you propose, Pais? I propose to let the children go. No, not until they have confessed. Oh, I should have thought of this a long time ago. Now listen to me. The credibility of their crazy story depends upon a miracle that's guaranteed to convince everyone. But there will be no miracle. And the whole affair blows up in their faces. You expect me to tell that angry mob it was all a joke, putting those brats in jail? And I'll tell them, but release the children. Give them enough rope and they'll hang themselves. Oh, do what you want. Just get them off my hands. But the lady promised no miracle today. Not until October. And we will wait till October. Then when the mob realizes how they've been deceived, they will settle this problem for us. Yes, my friend. We will give the children back to the people. <laughs> In a few moments, we'll continue with Act Three of The Miracle of Fatima. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Recently, the Institute of International Education in Los Angeles, California, opened an office for its new affiliate, the Center for International Students and Visitors. When foreign visitors, sponsored by public or private groups, visit Los Angeles, the center provides them with help in seeing and learning the American way of doing things. It's been found that, for the most part, visitors would rather see how Americans live rather than how they make money. Within a recent two months period, the center was host, in one way or another, to a Finnish publisher, a French director of police, a Malayan journalist, a United Nations delegate from India, a director of education from Iceland, a German lawyer, a Korean editor, and an Austrian composer. Visitors usually stay from two days to three weeks, and when they return to their own countries, they take with them a clear and honest picture of how Americans live, thanks to an organization which has dedicated itself to the spreading of world amity, an organization which has discovered that by helping others, you help your country. for station identification.
The curtain rises on Act Three of The Miracle of Fatima, starring J. Carol Nash as Hugo and Susan Whitney as Lucia, with Janet Nolan as Maria. So it was that the children returned to Fatima. So it also was that on the 13th of September, the lady again appeared to them, but only to them. And again from a cloud that hung low over the little tree in the cova. But what everyone was waiting for was the day when the miracle would happen. For this, Lucia said, would happen. Look at me, Hugo. You haven't prayed in years, have you? Well, I, I, I told you once, little one, for some people, praying is very fine. I recommend it. But for Hugo, no, 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 I don't think so. You're angry at Papa, aren't you? Because he won't let you sell tickets to the cova. But how I can be angry with my dear friend? My partner, besides that, I have something better now than tickets. Rosaries, little one. Boxes full of rosaries, and only Hugo will be permitted to sell them on your father's land. You'll make a lot of money. Well, is there something wrong with that? I, I'm not sure. If only you believe. But when the lady does the miracle, then you'll believe, won't you? Well, you, I believe, baby. Oh, no, you don't. You like me, but you don't believe. Lucia, we are very good friends, huh? Maybe you'll tell Hugo what, what, what kind of a miracle the lady is going to make. She didn't say what kind. Oh, she only when, huh? Yes. Yes, on October the 13th. Tomorrow. Never in the history of our mountains had there been such days as these. The people, the crowds, young, old, rich, poor, strong, weak. And all of this because of three little children... This indeed was the miracle in itself. Among those who made the journey to Fatima was the bishop. And on the night of October 12th, he summoned the children before him. The children and their parents. You see, you know, do you not, that there are tens of thousands of people here tonight because of your claim? Forgive me, but we didn't ask them to come. My child, you don't seem to realize how difficult it is for these throngs to get here. A desolate place on the top of a mountain. No place to sleep, save on the ground and in the rain. Many bring their sick, hoping to have them healed by the merciful one. Mothers come with prayers for their sons in the war. The poor will be hungry, and there are no loaves and fishes here to feed them. Some may even die. And for all this, you children are responsible. Did Our Lady ask for that? No, Sir Bishop, no. You have said the Mother of God predicts another great war. And still more wars. I only know what she told me, Father Ferrer. You see what nonsense this is. Tomorrow all these people will be waiting for a miracle. The lady will keep her word. But if it should fail, if that great crowd has cause to think that you've lied, it will become an angry mob. And then, God help you all. This is what your enemies are hoping for. But even now, it may not be too late. Even now, they will forgive a child if she confesses her sin. But I haven't sinned. I haven't sinned. It is no use. Father Therese, take me to your church. We will pray together for guidance to aid these poor. They've gone, Lucia. It's all right. It's all right. They don't believe me, Mama. They don't believe. We, we believe you, Lucia. We'll go with you to the Kuma tomorrow. If there is no miracle, the mob will have to walk on me before they get to you. But no more tears, my little bird. No more tears. This way to the Kova, Sinores. Buy yourself a new rosary at wholesale prices. There are no rosaries sold at the Kova. I have also for sale a few more branches. From the holy tree that held our lady. Take one home, Sioris, enjoy your own visions. <laughs> Rosaries and a branch, Sioris, Rosaries. Who got out ahead? Come, Francisco, it's a little tree. No, stay close to us and to Father Ferreira. These pilgrims will grab you for souvenirs. Lucia, if it keeps on raining. It rain, doesn't matter. Do you think it rains in heaven? No, but if it does... Well, heaven is where Our Lady is. 
and she'll come to us no matter what happens. You see, uh, you say this lady of yours is supposed to appear at noon? She's always come at noon, Father. The crowds on our way here to the Cova delayed us longer than we thought. Look. Look at my watch, Lucia. It's past noon. It's past 12 o'clock. Exactly. You know what this means? It means that nothing is going to happen. I want you to leave this place now. I can't go, Father. The lady said she'd be here. You have done harm enough. Do as I tell you. Father, this land is not much, but it is mine. You have no right to order my daughter away from here. This is the spot here, before the little tree. Can we pray now, Lucia? Can we start now? Pay no attention to the people, Jacinta. Let them do as they wish, but we will pray. Again, they were on their knees, and the moments went by, and nothing happened, but the children did not move. The crowd became restless. They had been here for hours and all for nothing, and angry voices echoed against the hills. And then those closest to the children saw them smile, and they heard the voice of Lucia. We knew you'd come to us, dear lady. What do you want? The crowd was suddenly silent. Just the falling of the rain. I want to tell you that war is going to end, and soldiers will return to their homes. Do not fear. In the end, God will triumph. You said you'd, you'd tell us who you are. I am the Lady of the Rosary. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary. The crowd was stirring again, for all they saw was, was a child talking to the empty air. You see, Senor Administrator, it would be as I said. They better pull some sort of miracle out of a hat, or this farce will become more tragic than we thought. Well, they can't say we didn't try to stop it. Holy Mother, you promised to give us a miracle so the people will believe. They will believe, my child. She's going away. Dear lady, no, no, don't go. Lucia, why is she going? Why is she leaving us so soon? She promised the miracle. Jacinta, Francisco, look! Look at the sun! The sun! The sun is coming toward us! Do the rain! The sun! The sun! This! This I saw with my own eyes. The sun in the heaven rushing toward us, turning itself to like a wheel of flame. And a great terror was on the people. They screamed, they prayed. Some could not move, but stood like stone and stared in the heavens. Others flung themselves on the ground. A blind woman shouted that she could see again. A cripple dropped his crutches. And then, then the sun halted in its course and drew back, back deep into the heavens. The children now turned toward their parents. The lady kept her promise, Mama. Look, the rain has stopped. Our clothes are dry. The earth is dry. Maria, it is dry. Like dust. My coat is dry. We stood in the rain, Papa. But our clothes are dry. Mama, Papa, now you believe, now you believe. I think now that even Ugo believes. Ugo? Only the, the fool says there is no God. this, as I have said, happened long ago when, when I was a young man. In 1917, the people of Fatima built a simple arch in the cova. But now, on that very spot, there stands a magnificent basilica. And on October 13, 1951, a million people from all over the world gathered there to do homage to a lady of Fatima. And I was among them. In the basilica, in the sacred spot, Francisco and Jacinto lie in their eternal sleep, while through the years their friend Lucia has devoted herself to holy service. 
How do you happy, Lucia? More than I can tell you. To think that the faith of you three children has brought a million people to Fatima. It is their own faith that brought them to go. They are yearning for peace on earth. If the people of the world will pray as Our Lady asked them to, God will send us peace. Of that, I am sure. In a moment, our stars will return. Shortly after World War II, some army officers in the Philippines took the time and trouble to find out that their houseboy had one burning ambition, one desire in life. And that was to come to the United States and study for the Baptist ministry. Well, they took it upon themselves to do a lot of corresponding and arranging. And they finally obtained a four-year scholarship for him at Eastern New Mexico College. Then the woman's missionary union heard about the boy. And they offered him a two-year seminary scholarship. But there was still a mighty important question. The question of raising $440 for his passage to the United States. And it was in an army chapel that Catholic, Protestant, and Jewish servicemen joined together to collect the funds so that this boy might become a Baptist minister. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are to accept our thanks for an inspiring evening. J. Carol Nash and Susan Whitney. And you've added another excellent characterization to your repertoire, Carol. Well, if you like it, I'm like it, too. For heaven's sake, why are you using a dialect? Maybe too much Luigi. No, no, it's not that, Susan. It, well, it's, it's just that everyone thinks I'm a Latin. They just won't believe that I'm Irish. <laughs> so I, I naturally lapse into a dialect at times. And come to think of it, uh, Susan, it's all Irving Cummings' fault. That's right, Susan. Many years ago, I directed Carol in the picture called Down Argentine Way. He had his first part with a dialect and was a great hit. Mamma mia. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that was your fault, too, because, Irving, you were so successful as a director. But, Susan, let me give you a little advice. If you don't want to carry your birth certificate with you wherever you go, you stick to your native language, huh? <laughs> Believe me, I'm having a hard enough time at school with the English language, but I do want to be a versatile star when I grow up. But I mean, I, I'd like to ask you one question. What is it, Carol? What is going to be a program next week or maybe, huh? Is it going to be good? <laughs> well, this being spring and all, we're going to bring you one of the most delightful comedies ever produced by Metro Goldwyn Mayer. It's Angels in the Outfield. And the stars of this hilarious story will be George Murphy, and in their original roles, Janet Lee and Donna Cockcock Co Co Oh, I'm going to love that. I good am, night. I'm too well. Good night, Irene. Good night. by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.